a few short words about this book that is back there. And by the way, it's called my green book. That makes it politically correct, right? It's green, so uh, it's called So Shall My Word Be. And it's actually a, d a study in science and botany. Now, you might think that sounds boring. The fact of the matter is you will find out how to live by faith if you understand how the plant world works. Okay, let me let that sink in just for a second. The Bible actually promotes the idea of seeing people as plantings. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house, your children like olive plants all around your table. The psalmist called himself a green olive tree in the house of the Lord. And all through the Bible, we are seen as plantings. Well, don't you think if you could understand how a plant works, you might know how you work and how you should respond to God just like plants do. And so there's, uh, there's additionally, there's six testimonies in here of people who applied the same principles and were saved from incredible um, things that they were going through, including cancers and such. One young man shoved his arm through a glass plate and cut himself from wrist up to elbow, cut it completely open, and he was dying. And they began to call on the Lord. And some of those same things we must learn to do to live by faith. You live in a world where there's a lot said about the grace of God, but you really need to also learn how to live by faith. So shall my word be. It's living by the faith revealed in nature's amazing model. Uh, and even if I had a chance to tell it to you, um, and, and I left, and I'm out of your, out of your life, when you walk out these doors, there's going to be plants staring you in the face and are going to be challenging you to live, live for God and to live by faith. God put it in creation. So anyway, that's what my book is about, and uh, it'll give you a new meaning for what a tree hugger is all about. <laughs> hey, and also, don't you talk about a tree that's on this campus? Yeah, uh, you see these little trees that are up and down the, the uh, street called crepe myrtles? Some of you don't know that term, but it's crepe myrtles. In the hot summer heat here at Christ for the Nations, if you go and stand under that tree, it's actually raining a small little bit of water down on you. Anybody have that experience? Yeah, many of you have. You stand well, under a crepe myrtle in, the, in a hot summer day, small little water droplets are dropping down on you, which is proof positive that what my book is about is true because that couldn't happen unless there's a, a creative process going on inside a plant uh, that's telling us every day how we should live by faith. No kidding. You, you will, it will change your whole perspective. A lot of people think that faith is hard. Faith is not hard at all. As I said yesterday, faith is not academic. It is something we grow in. It is something we choose. It is something we continue to develop in. But it will be the anchor in all that you do. That day when the doctor came in and said, Gail, you have to choose between your baby or your eyes, what anchored me that day to make the right choice was a verse I'd memorized years ago that I've set before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life that you and your descendants might live. And I forgot to tell you yesterday that that daughter that I carried that the doctors thought was a foolish decision, she's now our only married daughter so far, and she and her husband have given to us two grandsons. What we must have is a vision for the next generation. See, if you're not careful, you'll live only for yourself, your own space, and your own face. But listen to me. There's so much more. What God wants to do, he's moving heaven and earth so that you can explore and, and develop and become all that he's called you to be in the design of his heart, his vision for you, and it's beyond anything you can see. If you all are living life only based on what you see, You'll always be disappointed, and in fact, you'll be deceived. It's about more than you can see. It's about getting a vision. It's about holding on to the dream, and it's about being released sore, and that's what God wants to do. And you may say, how can I do that, especially this week? Might feel like you're max. Maybe you're max financially, coming to the end of what's been going on this year at Christ for the Nations, or perhaps you're on your way to a mission field. Don't limit the Holy One of Israel. He'll do beyond what you can imagine that he can do.